see what happened if we put everybody in the right place to make the best event possible. This event's gonna be amazing. I'm super excited for it. It's awesome to have an opportunity like this, so we're gonna go all the way. This is probably one of the craziest skate parks in the world. Super stoked to be out here with everyone. It's such an amazing opportunity. It's, it's insane, like everyone's killing it. Amazing, I love being here with all the homies, so I'm just enjoying it, man. I mean, when you hear the crowd yelling your name, feel it inside your chest, as well as the beats and the music. It's just an honor to be here, this is the best. Best event I've ever been to. My name is Simon Skold. I come from a background of pro MMA and I've been involved with news media and TV shows for the last five years. I'm also a sports commentator and a sports documentarist. Earlier this year I was passing a skate park here in Stockholm and I saw a bunch of kids riding scooters. And that reminded me of when I was a kid we were also riding the scooters. It was a lot of fun, but the tricks the kids are doing today, they're so much more advanced than the stuff we were doing back then. And that got me thinking, is scootering still something kids just do for fun? Or is it a real sport? I know this guy Dakota Schultz. I met him a couple of years ago. And if I'm not wrong, he knows a thing or two about scootering. I'm gonna see if I can get in touch with him. This is pretty crazy. So Dakota is a pro scooter rider. He's a multi-pro world champion with loads of Grand Prix wins. And he even got two Guinness World Record under his belt. He never even said that. It's impressive. I'll send him a message. All right, looks like he's available right away. So I'm gonna give him a call. Hey man. Hey Simon, long time no see. Yeah, how are you? I'm doing pretty well. Awesome. As I wrote to you, I'm in the process of making a documentary about scootering and I want to aim at clarifying if it is a sport or if it's something that kids just play around with. Okay, well cool. That's awesome. You're making a documentary about scootering. It's definitely an interesting sport and for sure it's not a kid's toy. <laughs> it's a legitimate sport and there's so many competitions around the world and uh, this September I got a pretty big event you might be excited about. Okay, tell me about the event. Um, so in September, I'm hosting the Action Space Invitational. It's going to be okay. the biggest event in the history of the sport. We're inviting the top 25 riders in the world. We have big outside sponsors, so that shows that the sport's getting very legitimate and a lot of people are interested, even outside the industry, So, which is very All cool. Right. Um, the event is going to be September 14th and 15th in England, and I think it'd be a great idea if you can get there and come document it and see what it's all about. Well, that sounds really, really good. So could I like interview the, the riders and talk to them? Oh yeah, no, I'll get you full access and get you be able to interview anybody you want. Now you really made my day. That sounds awesome. Awesome. We'll book your flight and we'll see you there. All right. I'll see you there. So it looks like I'm going to England. I just arrived at Orlando Airport where I finally I'm gonna start my journey to the Action Space Invitational. It takes place about one and a half to two hours north of London, and that's where I'm gonna make this documentary. I'm all set, I'm checked in, let's go. So we're all set and ready for takeoff. When I was talking to Coda, I started thinking about the pros that are competing in the Action Space Invitational, and these are people that I never heard of. And Coda mentioned to me that the last three world champions will be there, John Marco, Jordan Clark, and Dante Hutchinson. I need to check these guys out on Instagram. Wow, they almost got a million followers combined. Th that's crazy. These guys, they really must be something. Because a million followers, that's a lot. I I'm really excited and I can't wait to meet these guys.
After a short flight to England, I touched down at Heathrow, just outside London, and jumped straight into a cab headed two hours north to a town called Corby in the Midlands, where the event was taking place. So we're at the hotel, John Marker just arrived, he's the world champion, he's just signed by Action Space. We're going to Adrenaline Alley now to check out the arenas. The competition doesn't start until tomorrow, but all the riders are arriving today. Hi. Could you help us uh, book a big taxi for five person to go to Adrenaline Alley? I arrived at Adrenaline Alley, met up with Coda and then Stewart, who showed me around the facility. It's huge. The event is a two-day event where the first day is practiced and a pro-am comp, and the second day is when the main event kicks off. So this is the scooter room. This yeah. is where we're going to be hosting the game of scoot. So Coda's invited eight riders. So this is where we've got the um, pro-am competition. Okay, here's the pro-am. Uh, yeah. That's going to be so cool. You're an amateur and get to ride with the pros. Everyone I talk to is so excited about the pro-am competition, as it's the first time an event of its kind has happened in the sport of scootering. Coda explained more about why he wanted to bring the pro format of competition to scootering. Basically, we created the pro-am competition because in every other sport they have it, where the amateurs have the chance to ride with a pro. Because like when you're riding am, you want you know, like your dream is to get to pro level, but you kind of don't know the steps to take and getting to ride with a pro in a competition and see really how they have to perform and act and get treated is that's what I wanted to kind of give these kids and you could see by their faces just the reaction of which pro they got to pick. Definitely it's going to be cool to see them ride against their idols. It was really interesting to learn how Coda had adapted the traditional pro-am format for this event. I've previously been involved in pro-am styled events. For example I took part in the TV show Let's Dance in Sweden where professional dancers are paid to dance with amateurs. Traditionally, pro-am events are in sports such as golf, where the amateur pay a lot of money in order to practice alongside their heroes, the professionals. For the Action Space Invitational, the entrance fee of the event is only five pounds, and there's no additional fee to participate in the pro-am qualifier. When the kids have qualified for the pro-am, then they will ride and compete with some of the best riders in the world. At this program, the pro riders happily participate for free as they know how important it is to inspire the kids. The pro riders did a tremendous job in encouraging the kids to pursue their goals and maybe one day become a pro rider themselves. Even though that this was the first day and the real event first started on the second day, the pro-am was my first experience within the world of competitive scooter riding. It was great to see that all the riders were taking it very seriously and were also having fun and enjoying it too. Your first ever Pro-Am Champions are Dylan Morrison and Harry Hedges! Alright, how did that feel? Oh, that was amazing! Yeah. You're now the winner of the first ever yeah. Pro-Am competition in school ring. Yeah, I'm happy. Yeah. This has given me so much motivation. This is the end of part one of this documentary. Join me in part two. Welcome back to part 2 of this documentary, which will cover the second day and it's the start of the main event. During the event I met Taylor Ray, an artist from the west coast of America, who had been so tremendously inspired by the pro riding culture that he had written a song in praise of the culture. Make some noise, Corby, for Taylor Ray! I talked to Taylor to learn more about the song. So I'm performing a song called The Gold and the Glory. It's more than winning a title or winning the gold or winning the league, you know, it's it's the, the process of being a champion where you can maintain that all yeah, year. To perform on, on this level, I mean it's a lifestyle. crazy like where it's where it's coming in to be a part of like the forefront or like the frontiering of basically a new sport and seeing these guys basically mold it into what it's going to become and the level is so high so quick so First, I need to introduce the main man himself, the guy who came up with the very idea for this contest. Let's make some noise for multiple ISA world champion, Dakota Shaw! Take it away, Kota! Dakota Shaw, welcome to the action space!
Race Invitational! The atmosphere at the opening ceremony was unbelievable. I couldn't believe how passionate all the fans and the riders were. All the lights, the effects, the noise. It was like watching a rock star perform on stage. The more I saw during the event, the more apparent it was how these riders are treated like rock stars as well. All the riders commented how they never seen anything like this before. Flights, hotels, food, transportation was all paid for. And everything was planned to the tiniest detail. By now I'd already started to think that with all the spectacle and emotions I'd seen, Scooter must be much more than just a toy. After all the excitement of the opening ceremony, I couldn't wait to see the pro riders in action. The first competition was a game of Scoot, which was to be the first of its kind at a pro scooter comp. I caught up with Koda during the event and he had handpicked 8 out of the 25 top riders of the world to see how this would work at a real pro scooter comp. I mean, Game of Scoot's a competition that I play literally every day at the skate park. And so it's cool to bring it into like the competition world and where I can make sure that there's nice rules and everything makes sense. I was really interested to see how these pro riders would act in something that normally is a play at the skate park, but where they could win $7,500. Welcome to the world's biggest game of scoop. Make some noise, action space invitational! In the game of Scoot, each rider must perform different tricks that involve a certain level of difficulty. Two riders compete against each other and must perform each other's tricks. Whenever one rider fails to perform the other's trick, he gets a letter. There are five runs, each representing each letter in Scoot. And the first that gets the word Scoot has lost. The atmosphere among the riders and the audience reminded me of a party a lot more than a sports competition. Not the serious intense feeling that some comps have, but joy and happiness like when a big family get together. He's got, he's gonna call it out. On the shoots goes out, Chris Farris takes the win! I watched heat after heat and the time just flew by. I really had a blast. I really couldn't believe how supportive all the riders were, even to their opponents. I was so amazed by the camaraderie between the riders. It didn't seem to matter if they won or lost. They just wanted to enjoy riding scooters together and to see what they could all achieve. I was intrigued to see if this would still be the case in the final, when the winner would take home $7,500. Even in the final, the competitors were giving each other tips and helping each other to perform their tricks. I've never seen anything like it in sport before. Trying to help your opponent beat you? I was looking forward to seeing if it would be the three-time world champion Jordan Clark or the upcoming star Cody Flum who would win the 7500. Even when it came down to the final trick, Cody Flam was still helping his opponent Jordan Clark and tried to teach him the trick, a decision that could cost him $7,500. I really couldn't believe it. He's not feeling that he can get it, but if anyone can, it's the three-time world champ. Adrenaline Alley, the last hit of the contest, put your hands together. It's 
just something I've never seen, even in my own sport or any other pro competition. Two top pro athletes competing against each other, but also helping each other to win the title and the prize money. To me, this showed true sportsmanship in its purest form, and I had deep respect for these competitors, not only as athletes, but also as human beings. After an unbelievable first few days at the Action Space Invitational, the hype was building for the final day of the competition. Day 2 was the big day of the event, hosting the main pro park competition with the biggest prize purse ever in scooter riding history. With the top riders in the world all gathered in one place, a press conference was held on the final morning to give fans a glimpse of what was going through the riders' minds before the competition got underway. I love press conference. You never know what's gonna happen, so it's kind of fun to see. These guys look real excited, uh, so it's gonna be fun to watch uh, and see how a press conference in scootering is working. Will there be any beef today? Being a pro MMA fighter, I'm used to press conferences being very heated with competitors being aggressive and confrontational with one another. I really couldn't believe what I saw at this event. All 25 riders took the stage at the same time and sat alongside each other. They were genuinely enjoying each other's company and were looking forward to getting the opportunity to ride together later that day and put on a great show for the crowd. I'm just happy to be here. I'm so happy that Action Space can give everybody this opportunity. All the kids, all the kids here and everyone riding is unreal. So, you know, anyone, it's anyone's game. When you're in first place, boys, the only way is down. <laughs> when you're in second place, all you can do is go up, mate. Two main things caught my attention during the press conference. Firstly, there were two female competitors, and they would be competing in the same competition as the guys, which is something very rare in the world of sport. It is kind of crazy, like, being the first girl ever, but I'm not that pressured with it. I just, like, want to have fun. I want to be a good role model for other girls out there in general. I'm just stoked to be out here, honestly, and it's amazing that they've invited the girls out here this year. It's just, I'm so stoked to be here, so thanks so much. Secondly, I thought it was amazing to see how diverse the group of riders were and how this younger generation are so accepting and supportive of one another. It's really amazing to see how this sport can bring together so many different people with so much equality. All right, that was really nice. They're, they're funny. I mean, it's, it's different from where I came from, where you're going to fight each other on the, on the night. They're just going to hang out, they're going to ride, they're going to have fun. Uh, and it's about who can perform their best. So. It's going to be really nice to see. Throughout the whole event, I really couldn't believe how high the standard was in all areas. To me, it seemed on a par with some of the most famous sports in the world. That's the end of part two of this documentary. Join me in part three for the main event. Welcome back to the final part of this documentary and join us for the main event. Arriving at Adrenaline Alley on the final day of the competition, the atmosphere was absolutely electric. I've been on this trip to find out whether scootering is just a toy to play on for fun or whether it can be used as a real sport. I'd already been blown away by what I've seen so far. I couldn't wait to see what would happen today during the main event. During the event I learned about the basic principles of a park scootering competition and I was surprised to learn that there were actually a lot of similarities between how scootering is judged and sports such as ice skating, gymnastics and ballroom dancing. Having been involved in competitive ballroom dancing I knew the criteria your performance was marked on. Areas such as speed, elegance and technical difficulty. This was similar for scootering. Each trick performed was comparable to a dancing or an ice skating move. In scootering, judges also considered the ramp or area of the course on which the trick was executed in the score as well. The maximum score for the riders was 100 points, with points deducted whenever a mistake was made. I was so excited for the finals. There was a huge crowd lining the outside of the park. They took up every possible space in order to see the action. The noise was insane. Adrenaline Alley, are you ready? It must have been such an amazing atmosphere for the riders and reminded me of the crowds at my MMA fights and other big sporting events. 
I was absolutely enthralled by what I saw. You couldn't help but get engaged, visualizing what the riders were seeing as they spun and flipped high above the park. The level of difficulty went way beyond something you would do with a toy. These riders must have practiced these moves thousands and thousands of times, with a dedication that only serious athletes have. Just like the game of Scoop, all the riders were there supporting each other. It didn't seem to matter that there was serious money on the line. They were just enjoying riding together and pushing not only their own, but also each other's ability. It is last trick time, Chris Farris. The finalists were giving a last chance to perform one last trick for the crowds, which would score them the all-important points to win the contest. The moment that really summed everything up for me was Spencer Chernside landing a huge new trick in the last round of the contest. I couldn't believe how happy all the other competitors were, even though their opponent had just potentially landed a trick that meant they might not get onto the podium themselves. It was it was probably the best, easily the best moment in my scooter career so far. I, I that's the best thing that ever happened to me. I love it. Second place is Jordan Hall. This is my first uh, scooter competition watching. I will definitely be watching it in the future. It has been so amazing to see you guys both perform and how you act. Uh, you know after uh, the competition. It's all about respect, man, you know. You know what I mean? It's probably the best trick so any, any crowd has ever seen. What more can you ask for? And the winner of the first Action Space Invitational, 20 Grand, Chris Ferris! The moment Chris Ferris was announced as the winner was truly unbelievable. To see all the riders so genuinely pleased for him. It made me realize how scootering prioritizes the community over individuals. Everybody was so happy for you. Man, when they called out your name, they were like, I don't know what they were pushing you or they were wrestling you. Everybody was so happy. These are all my best friends, man. I mean, this, this is my life. These, these guys are my brothers and sisters. Like, this is my life. Scootering is my In life. The community I have, it's amazing. These, yeah, exactly. I mean, that's what's most important in my opinion is the fact that we're all here together. You know, every time the industry, you know, when we're all in the same you know, area at the same time, we all grow the support no matter what. So that's my favorite thing about this, this competition. I was so grateful to Coda for inviting me out to be a part of this event and getting to learn more about the incredible world of scooter riding. In only a few short days, I've made some great friends, experienced a world-class competition, and more importantly, been shown a whole new world of sport and culture I never knew existed. This journey has been educational and very enlightening for me. With my background as a pro MMA fighter, getting a glimpse at the world of scootering has really opened my eyes. There was so much equality here, with men and women competing in the same events, side by side. I witnessed true sportsmanship in an arena where helping the community and supporting your fellow athlete are far more important than winning. I most definitely learned that scooters are not something that kids just mess around on, but at this level of scootering is most definitely a sport. And what's more, it's a sport with a very bright future. Yeah.